once you're signed up, you will see a dashboard like this one. It will have droplets, images, networking, monitoring. It can change by the time you're following the course, but it should look a little bit like this. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a droplet. I'm going to click this button and I'm going to create an Ubuntu droplet. I'm going to choose for 1604, which is the stable edition of Ubuntu. You can choose another one, but I only tested the course on this one. So it's best to take the same version as me. You can choose a size. So if you take the $20 one, you will be able to run it for free for two weeks. If you take the $10 one, it's going to go a little bit slower, but you can run it for a month. I think this one is a good choice. You can choose a data center, one that is closest to you. I'll take Amsterdam, I'm in Europe. You can add SSH keys if you want passwordless authentication. If you don't do it, then they will send you the password via email. So that's the easiest way. You can choose a host name. I will just leave everything to default and then you can click create. And this will then create a new instance for us. Now we have a new droplet and this is the IP address. So if you click this one, then we have all the details and you can SSH to this IP address. If you're on Linux or Mac OS, you can just open a terminal. You can, st you can start a terminal and then on this terminal, you can SSH to this IP address using the login root. So you can do minus L root or root, you can do root at. The password is going to be emailed to you. If you're on Windows, you can download Putty. Putty is a free SSH client for Windows. So you can just download it here for Windows. When you open Putty, you will see a screen like this and you can put as a host name the IP address port 22 and then click open and then you will be able to put your login and password. So the password you can find in the email that has been sent to you by DigitalOcean. If none of this works, you can also click here on console and then a console will open in your web browser. And then here you can just enter root and the password that has been emailed to you. That's also a possibility. And if all went well, then it should say Jenkins installed. You should now be able to access Jenkins at the IP address of this droplet port 8080. Let's have a look at what was really in this script so that we know what we have executed. So this script has a few commands to install Docker. These commands you can find on the Docker website. It's just some basic commands to install Docker engine. And then we're going to enable and start Docker. If we have an Ubuntu user, this instance doesn't have an Ubuntu user, we're going to add the Docker group to this Ubuntu user. If you are root, you can just use Docker straight away. But in Linux, it's recommended not to do things as root. So it's better to use a user. In this demo, because we now logged in as root, the administrator user, I'm just going to continue using this user. Then we're going to create a directory, Jenkins home, and we're going to change the ownership of this Jenkins home because that will, this will be the ID that our Jenkins will be running under. And then we're going to execute Docker run, which is going to start a container. Container name is Jenkins. It's the official Jenkins container that Docker will download. So you will see here, you see here, it's pulling from the Docker library Jenkins, and then it's going to run this container. Make sure that this port is exposed and it's going to use a Docker volume is going to say if you're using this container then your var jenkins home will be mapped to this var jenkins home that i just created that these are just little details that come with docker you don't really need to know those for this course but if docker interests you i would definitely recommend one of my other courses that covers docker then it says jenkins installed and you should now be able to access jenkins at this url so let's try that Let's try and go to this URL. And then we see the Jenkins page 
it says unlock Jenkins to ensure Jenkins is securely set up by the administrator. We have to enter a password and we can find it in the Jenkins home. Let's go back to our terminal and let's use cat to show the contents of the initial admin password. I'm going to put this password here and then continue. You can select plugins to install or you can install suggested plugins. I'm going to go for the suggested plugins and now Jenkins is going to install a bundle of standard plugins. This can take again a couple of minutes. I'm installing Jenkins version 2.46.2. It's very possible that this number is already different, that you are already on another version. So it might already look a little bit different, but luckily the core of Jenkins doesn't change that often. Whatever I'm going to explain you in this course will be valid for a very long time. And then we can create the first admin user. Create a username, for instance, admin, and you can give it a password. You can enter your full name or just a name and email address and then save and finish. Now we can start using Jenkins. And now our Jenkins is installed. I hope you didn't find this very difficult. It was pretty easy to set up Jenkins.